close. Oh boy. <sighs> the Costa Concordia. Ship of dreams. I thought Concordia was a university. Eight years. I can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants. Oh, the casino and three-story theater had hardly been used. Oh my God. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins. So ridiculous. Hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. And you could tell. You could really tell. Yeah, I bet you could. Dude, this is dumb. Who the fuck builds a boat that big? Why do you need to have a theater in a boat? It's like there's a point. You know, there's a story in the Bible where they were building... And they were building and they were getting too close to God. And God slapped their shit down. He said, quit it. This is too much. I feel like we're getting close to that with this boat. Tower of Babel. Yeah, it's a Tower of Babel. That's right. made them all speak different languages and shit. I remember it like it was just a few years ago. I would never want to go on one We had these. left Civita Vecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. Of course. It was day two of our seven-day journey. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh my God. When she premiered, the yeah. traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side oh. instead of smashing. A bad omen. But I'm not the that superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January, 2012. 2012 on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic. On a ship that's also <laughs> only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Especially oh, not shit. when you have a five star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. What's wrong with him? A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. How does that make sense? Yeah, you've been you've been watching the door for a while. Why don't you come on up here? Come on up here. Why don't you take us for a ride? You got boosted. It just seems like a it's a it's a very lateral move. He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, yeah. when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernamon, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. Un I've got a good feeling about this. <laughs> so let's set the scene. So is this guy like, is this, he's got to be like the, uh, the, the company owner's son or something like that, right? I mean, he, this is, that's a fuck up. It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides, oh, drinks good. at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. I don't know who that Martin is. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals hate it, but the customers love it. And it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the- That's so fucking perfect, man. Because you think about the fucking stupid assholes that want to go on a boat that's got a theater on it with a bar. And it's like, of course they're going to drive by people's houses and fucking honk the horn. Be like, hey, look at us. We're so special. We're on a boat that's bigger than the whole city. Oh, wow. Yeah. This No, this is perfect fucking marketing for people like this. Absolutely fucking perfect dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Oh good. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. Okay. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Right. Just 1500 feet from the island of Giglio. 
And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Skatine? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, the thing is, man. Let's say he eyeballed it the first time he got in a wreck. And he eyeballed it the second time he got in a wreck. He's out of eyes. Why, why don't we try to... Why don't we try to do a little bit of math here, you know? Like, this is like the third time. This, this, this is the third time. You know, turns to the fella steering. His helmsman. Jacob Rusley Bin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia okay. at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At least What's the difference? we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't yeah. speak English or Italian very well at all. <laughs> Off to a good start. The but hey, it was cheap, right? Uh, yeah, hired him cheap. I mean, it is what it is. And orders the helmsman to 290. <laughs> now, don't be confused by these numbers. They're just the degrees on a God, compass. God, I don't know where time, this boss is The going. captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Yeah. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. Right. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. Yep. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New oh heading God. of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. Okay. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says, 325, but the helmsman relays, 315. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love stories like this because you know that shit's gonna go wrong and with a boat that slow you get to watch the entire thing in slow motion it it's so good so the first officer intervenes and he goes no 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 three three five oh. which is also wrong and then the captain clarifies no oh. three two five the helmsman confirms three two five okay. their poor communication Smart. has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are However, the captain uh -oh. should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. Of course. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing it. Why would they do that? 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The it's captain fast. then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. It's cool. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Jesus. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands the ship to start turning away. Three, three. I had this happen in Valheim. Uh, I fucking thought I was going over some water, and uh, then I got my ship stuck. My longboat stuck for, like, fucking... I, I, I don't know. It was, like, a, a half hour? Because I had to... I was thinking I, I had to rebuild the thing on the other side because it was stuck, and I couldn't push it out because the water kept going up and down and so like i can really relate to to this guy man like it happens now the thing is though is like i had like 30 iron on board and not like 300 people so this the stakes weren't as high it wasn't a you know it wasn't a big deal that i fucked it up you know what i mean it wasn't three thousand that's even worse three five not enough 
The captain shouts, uh -oh. 340. The captain yells, 350. Uh -oh. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Yeah. Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. Oh. So despite the order of 350, right now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Oh, no. Not nearly enough to miss oh, the rock. No. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350 oh! starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Oh my god! Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. Yeah. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still, it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. Yeah. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship which centers the rubber. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port this 5 is before intense. another order is given to. I want to know what happens. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. It's good. But then, they survive. oh no. Uh. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. Bro, <laughs> that is not, that is not a language barrier issue. That is, I am looking down and there is a rock here and not here and you go there. Like that, I, I don't want to hear, that is not a language barrier. That is a fucking brain barrier issue. That is stupid. He did it on purpose. I, I doubt that. I don't know. I, it's, we're eight minutes into the 40-minute video, so honestly, I, I'm, I'm ready for anything. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. Oh, he has God. just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, We're gonna hit! Collision. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> Who's the captain? <laughs> That's what you get for being an asshole. Sure, sure the locals really appreciate them. Downtown Nordtown. Okay. It's day 56 of playing Russian roulette. Seems I never win. Gonna drink all by yourself? Somebody has to. I hear you're a man who's good at finding folks. I'm many things. Okay. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little oh. heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers this in dozens so of countries across the globe. God damn. And just like that, she was gone. God the only damn. thing she left was a calling card. This is actually clever. It makes sense. It's funny. Sometimes when you wow. follow a case, it follows you back. NordVPN can protect my online data. But who can protect me? We really got to step it up. Like last time we advertised for uh, Cash App. We were like, so get cash apps so you can buy Bitcoin. Like we've real we've really gotta step this up. Yeah, and like this is way this is way better. Holy shit, okay. Yeah, I, I we got I gotta send this to the team. We, we gotta work on this. Myself. When they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect world we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't that kind of story. I took the brakes off my car. Man like me never really learned how to stop. Shut the fuck up. I took the steering wheel out too. I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. Let Jesus take the wheel, I That's like it. That's right, toots. Your husband's dead. Oh, shit. Mary 
Christmas. Jesus Christ, this is... Go to nordvpn.com slash internet historian. What? For a huge discount on a two-year What? That's brutal. How? Add... Uh... The ship hits rocks on the port Ooh. side. A 53-meter gash opens up in the hull, and thousands of tons of water oh, begin wow. pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. Oh my At god. At the helm, there's panic. Yeah, Rumblings I wonder. in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's confusion across yeah. the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. Oh my god. On connection with All the rocks, on they deck. lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So yeah. much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Everything. Oh my the captain God. orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position this of the scary. rudder. This is scary. Out of that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute darkness. Oh my god. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first... So apparently they weren't watertight. That sucks. Honestly, though, like, the people that made this ship and that hired this guy, they were asking for it. I mean, here's the way I look at it, right? Is if you are... If you are the captain of a $500 million ship and you get but a scratch on that entire thing, it's time for a new captain. You know? It's, it's time for a new fucking captain. Because you never know. You've seen what happened with the Titanic and other stuff too. Yeah, you're done. Okay? Yeah, there's no flex tape, no Gorilla Glue, nothing. You're fucking out. <laughs> Compartment 5, which filled very rapidly. Then 6, more slowly. 4, shortly after. Yep. Then 7, 8, and 3. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. Ooh. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. How convenient. These main generators give power to the whole ship. $500 From million. Dollars. to rudder to hotel functions. Pretty much everything. Wow. When they went out, the ship was a functionless, sinking cage. A few That's seconds later, scary. the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. And wow. it caused a huge panic in the theater, what as passengers trip? are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. What, are these People actual videos? People in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Oh my God. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please return to your cabins. Yeah, everything's totally okay. The emergency okay. generator starts. All of the watertight doors close, except for door 12, which is jammed. The this is like a movie. Peabot, the chief engineer, oh as my the God. ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes. There's water. You can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps. I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd, further okay. increasing panic. On the bridge, an I'll announcement bet. is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Smart. Let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. That's smart. You know, you just be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, everything's fine. No, this ship's not sinking. What do you mean? Well, how? Well, because what? Because there's a little bit of water in the ship. Well, it's also now everybody thinks it's sinking. Nah, nah, nah. everything's fine. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments 5, 6, and 7 are flooded. Announcements are made. The captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation. To be fair, 
That's technically true. There was an electrical fault. I mean, they did not technically lie. <laughs> they were saying it was just an electrical fault. Now, what was the electrical fault caused by? Oh, by, you know, breaching the hull of the ship because they hit a rock and it's going to sink. But, you know, they didn't lie. They just didn't tell the whole story. Well, the me of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will I'd be Go stealing on, everything at this very point. very much not helping the situation. The captain calls the cost of crisis forks. unit. Roberto Ferrarini. Getting he ready tells to jump the crisis off the edge. unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that shit, they are dude. also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Ooh. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. Oh my god. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. Oh, shit. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. I this isn't why. like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So, she contacts It's the like, how could it fucking shit just sliding down? It's like, this is straight up out of the Titanic. It's like, hey, since when does an electrical outage cause the ship to turn sideways? This is actually like a fucking... This is whenever you really need a Karen to call the fucking manager. This is an actual Karen, yeah. Daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police. Yeah. And the police call the harbor master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but oh. where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, Shit. two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passengers begin going to muster stations on oh their own initiative. God. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I scary. do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? Uh, about 20 minutes. <laughs> have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I've got to go. The harbour master. Are you kidding me? That's so bad. That's so bad. Copium? Yeah, that's... I mean, I can see them not wanting to have a panic, but, like, there are times whenever you should panic, and whenever your ship is sinking, I think that is an acceptable panic time. Like, oh my god. The ship is sinking. Master is suspicious. He says to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Oh. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. Oh, the captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like, Is it still flooded? Yes. Yes it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. <laughs> the harbour master calls again. Is the water going to go Finally, away? Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tug boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. Oh my With God. three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. Jesus. The Coast Guard orders You know what's so terrifying about this? Is the fact that the video was only 17 minutes in. Like, isn't that so bad? Whenever you reach, like, you know, oh, the movie, it can't get any worse. And it's fucking like one third into the movie. Oh, shit. Ship to the sea. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Return to your Please cabins? Return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No problem. 
She said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense, and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story, and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Uh, Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he this orders the engine This is a $500 million dollar ship. The captain says, no, stay. We're leaving. So what do we do? General emergency? I feel like this reminds me of whenever you see somebody do like a really, really complex fucking combo in like Street Fighter or something where it's like fucking 18 buttons long. And like instead of th this being buttons, it's like mistakes. This is like a fucking 18 mistake combo <laughs> to sink the ship. It's like, it's like one mistake would have been all right. They would have been fine. But it's just like one after another <laughs> ultra combo. <laughs> fucking activating ultra instinct for the maximum fucking effect. The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandon ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. Yeah. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Yeah. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity, and it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out, and with that comes panic. Oh my and now that God. they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available, and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. Oh my the god. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. Jesus. So the Harbour Master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, No, 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 no. the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to maneuver. Are you it kidding onto the me? Shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the star. Are you anchor. kidding me? So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. Jesus. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbor. They watch the scene unfold. Yeah. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Dude, that's, this guy's a fucking badass. That guy's a fucking... Dude, that is... Wow. God damn. That's a Chad. Yeah, what the fuck? That just makes me think of fucking Ted Cruz. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Why can't, why can't we get one of these guys? Shit. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and Silvia Koronica leave with him. Oh my the god. The maitre d' and some Morton both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Oh my god. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. Jesus. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. That they should have done the Windows update. Yeah, it, it, it does that. From here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. 
A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Oh Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return oh to pick them up. Oh my god. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. No, no oh my god. Yes. You're not allowed to make a film I'm, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second helicopter, what a, a faster bitch. model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final But rest. you can, the thing is like, yeah, what a bitch. But you can, like, that's the kind of girlfriend that you want. Is like, she knows that her boyfriend this is probably the biggest fuck up he's had and she's there and she's got his back and she's like we gotta have as little people record this as possible because my boyfriend is probably about to get his ass beat like really i mean I, that's a lucky guy well not i mean you know not that lucky right because you know you look at the ship but with that you know with the girl yeah it's all right place. now the coast guard calls the captain Loyal. because he's yeah. just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The God. captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. <laughs> DeFalco tells the captain uh. to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. Jesus. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. That's sad. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. Wow. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain oh. helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, I the wonder. police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. Jesus. A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. That's he speaks nice. to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, uh -huh. and cries to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbor. That's actually the first understandable thing. That's honestly, that's what I would do. Like, I would be fucking, I would be done with it, man. I would be fucking done with it the master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. I would hope so. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30 second cab ride to the Bahamas hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. Good. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. Well, he's right, except for the people that are still on the ship. Well, the, yeah, I mean, besides the people that were still on the ship, he was the last one to leave the ship. I mean, that's true, isn't it? It's just a matter of perspective. All day Saturday, rescue a search for people on the ship. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit How? their cabin. The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin's service director. In the end, 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia Fuck. was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Oh my god. This is like... Oh my, this is like a, a, in rust or something, dude. Like, this shit's fucked up. Ghost hunting time? Yeah, like, who wants to bet? Like, whatever, like, I'll, I guess I'll find out. I'll talk, I'll talk about that later. Wow. Oh, shit.
That is crazy, man. They're but rebuilding this isn't the it. end. It's just oh. a halfway point. What most people know is that because the Concordia had crashed, many dead, and that the captain abandoned ship like a coward. Yes. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Okay. Let's dive in. Ah. There they are. The deets. <laughs> That's some real production quality, okay? I like that. That was an investment of like probably uh, eight dollars. <laughs> Looting. My man. All right. Blue box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall, a casino. Cha -ching, cha -ching. Oh yeah. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. Dude, you can you imagine how fucking badass that would be to sail out there with your boys? Trying to fucking salvage a, a fucking shipwreck ship with like a casino in it? Dude, that's some straight up pirate shit. Like, honestly, like that might sound fucked up, but my mom said that she was so glad like this last year, right? Whenever all the looting happened, she was so glad that it wasn't 10 years ago. And I'm like, why is that, mom? She says, because you'd be looting. I mean, look, dude, like this is this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something crazy like that. You guarantee that people would have been fucking doing that. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Oh my God. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. <laughs> High-end liquor, expensive furniture, Dining sets, cash from the casino, yeah. cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists. What the city? Oh the my god. Pizza. As well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> dude, can you imagine the dude that has this in his house? Can you imagine the dude that has this in his house? And he, wa you guarantee he probably watched this fucking video, man. And he sees it, he fucking... <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Who steals a big fuck off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught Look, inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing, oh my and God. thieving, and pinching. Later That's on, no winner, stolen winner, as well dinner. as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. That dude, that is such fucking, that is like so American, that's like some fucking American psycho shit, dude. Who the fuck buys that? Who the fuck buys that? I don't even understand with a watermark. Yeah, there's. Yeah, it's probably watermark on all of them. Some Australian guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. And although there were plenty of bidders, oh eBay pulled the plug. Wow. Cancel culture, guys. Can you believe it? I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, what? we have to talk about what? someone else. Domnica Samorton. That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Tense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. Yeah. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although, she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. Oh and how God. could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. 
<laughs> but she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe and they want to know I have some Here's the thing, right? Is like any this is the thing. If you've ever been in like an office, any girl that's like a five, right? Is automatically like a, like an eight. Like if there's like one girl there, you know, it, it's like automatically scales up. And so this dude's out at sea. I mean, because you know he's obviously not paying attention to, to sailing the ship. So what else do you think he's doing? Something with him, it's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Mr. Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone, oh, look. And took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatino, saying he must confess, and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Damn. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. This is before they had Twit Longer, so she had to post it on Facebook. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Oh, huh? what the fuck? And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. Damn, who would have ever fucking guessed that? What? Who could have ever fucking get... Imagine it being drugs. Wow. That's a shock. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. Smart. As an aside, Scudino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. Smart. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Uh -huh. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh right, a helicopter. Sir Morton commented on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Oh, okay, what? Wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? That must suck, dude. Whenever you're like dating a captain and you think that you're like part of like, you know, the in group and then the ship starts sinking and they don't have room for you on the escape helicopter. Man, that's some fucking... That is what you like to call a reality check. That's a fucking reality check right there. Oh, right. Sex with the captain. Play, 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 play. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Morton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up. Yeah. But they continued denying it. Nah. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, Jesus. she admitted it. See, yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. Boom. What is up, Troubler Nation? City no cheated on this wife with C or Tan. Oh my god! Wait, she was married? I don't know why I didn't expect that. I, I that one just kind of like fucking, you know, he was married. Yeah, is his mistress? Well, I, I didn't really think of it like that, you know. Um, is mistress what you call like a, a girl that uh that a dude is? I, I thought it was like home wrecker or some shit, right? Uh, no, I I didn't, I didn't even know that. The side, yeah, side chick or something like that. I, I didn't even know it was a, a mistress. I thought that was like some fucking domination shit. Yeah, I thought it was like domination. Why not? Why not two EZs? I mean, I I don't know about that, dude. She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket, ticket please, and didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's <laughs> lover. How convenient. Naturally, she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. 
And today I died the second time because, of course, people <laughs> find out something that I... The tried. laugh is whenever she realized she was saying something that was fucking stupid. And she has to, she knows it's like, ah, fuck. Uh, you know, I really wrote myself into a corner with this one, you know. We'll see if she goes down. <laughs> she goes down with her ship like the uh, captain did. To hide. Subsequent to the trial, yeah. she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist. What? Often appearing on television and radio what? and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. <laughs> If she wanted that much attention, she should have just streamed on Twitch. Oh, they gotta drag her. That's good. That's real cute. Oh, wow. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada. Yeah. And interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her Insta. No, oh God, not again. Oh no. Oh no. This girl's like COVID for ships. Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crochier, and their Jeez. parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Only? Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, yeah. and loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time and, and was not only taking, but uh -huh. the time the, the ship Today, was... Junior! Claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crochier offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. How much does it cost to go on a ship like that? How much money is it? Is it a lot or not? It's like $2,000, $3,000. Is everything paid for while you're on the ship? Or do you have to pay for, for things while you're on the ship? It's a week long trip. Yeah, I, I guess like 2K, one, like if it's like especially under 2K, for like a week long trip and like it's i could see where that would be worth it i'll tell you one thing man i'm gonna stay on on land really like i'd never would want to go on a ship especially like out in the ocean you think about that have you seen a shark you know what i mean like at a certain point why tempt fate 11,000 euros, don't, about $14,000, dollars there. is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, yeah. as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. Smart. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and yeah. they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult. For what these poor passengers went through, this we is think the attorney. The compensation being offered is not commensurate. Here, take it. Go ahead. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, Costa Crochier would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a one million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crochier is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Dude, that must be one of the best things about being rich, is if you get so rich, 
you just have to pay a fine. And the thing is, like, every, most people are dumb. So if they hear, like, oh, they had to pay a million dollar fine? <laughs> well, serves them right. <laughs> I knew it. Idiots. No, really, that's, uh, that's, oh, my God. It's a, dra it's a drop in a bucket. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been. It's like if you bought in WoW for fucking three months and they ban you for a week and they let you keep the gold. That's what it's like. To avoid criminal responsibility. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Yeah. <clears throat> Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. Not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, right. especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. That's good. Where's the mafia? That's a mistake. New York attorney Peter René traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At René and René, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. And uh, really? And while on the job... This is the one people told me that they were fucking... Somebody tweeted this shit at me. They said that I was in a video. What does that shit say? Asmongold's take on Carson drama? Uh oh. <laughs> oh man. That was a that was a spicy one, huh? Job That's crazy. a seventh case yeah. cropped up via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Uh -huh. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd, but Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch! Still, <laughs> Mr. Ronai was suspicious. Yeah. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Yeah. Elena said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. What? He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going- I actually really like seeing guys like this because it makes me feel better about my own heroin. But honestly, like, you see a dude like this. You see a dude like this with that hairstyle. And if he tries to sell you anything, you don't fucking buy it. You don't like that's the same. Those are the people that are saying like you. You look at your phone. You never make eye contact. You're no better though. Yeah, I am because I brush my hair forward and not backwards. That's why I'm better than him. I'm crazy, he said. But Mr. and I was still suspicious because then she asked. How much money do you think this is worth? <laughs> uh... This is a huge red flag, Petey. Yeah. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. and I hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, oh. uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the oh, police. Oh, shit. Couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Oh my god. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. What? So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle! And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Oh my... Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. <laughs> 
this guy's smart. Like, honestly, I'm impressed by this guy. Like, he fucking saw through that bullshit. He was on top of him. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mom, it's just a neighbor. Eventually, Renee smart. managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. My man. My man. Hey, hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. You take them for all they got. Love room that never sleeps. Call 1-800-664-7. Yeah, that guy knows it. Oh, that guy's really fucking idea. on top of it, dude. Oh my god. What the fuck? Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. Means get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Gregorio De Felco. The naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso became a bit of a national hero overnight in yeah, Italy. Yeah, I bet. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. <laughs> and when the captain chickened out, DeFelco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. Oh, shit. <laughs> when the captain first reported just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. Wow. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. How about Accordingly, that? shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, DeFalco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, you've been demoted. DeFalco said that he had been passed up for promotion that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco was tres furioso, and there was public speculation oh that it was God. owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss yeah, said- Yeah, that guy looks like a guy that fucking get upset about that shit. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a guy who's fucking get pissed off about that sh stupid shit. Yeah, well, yeah, I could see that. It looks like every main character it looks like an idiot. Looks like an idiot gets mad over somebody else doing something good. Uh, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show yeah, more maturity sure. and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. All in right. March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. <laughs> I'm the company now. That's, that's a come up, man. Is he gonna walk in there? Okay, here we go. Here's the, the fun part. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. Uh-oh. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. You can't keep getting away with it! Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not it just keeps up, man. This guy doesn't give a fuck. He just doesn't give a fuck. He does whatever he wants. Oh my god. Content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Okay. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the That's court. That's good. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. Fuck and the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. Oh, he shit. Me. 
Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Oh. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or they house arrest. They all ratted his Not ass a bad out. deal. A good deal. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Oh, fuck. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. That there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. My it took man. authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts yep. of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again. And he hasn't been found since. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony. Then That's so, impressive. Uh, look, we don't have time to That's reload again the whole trial. Dude. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty. Fuck him. Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and yep. lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month Jesus. in prison. But wait, there's still the appeals. The oh, appeals good. trial begins. All right. And the verdict on the appeal? Nope. Surprise! Rejected. So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? Scatino oh. made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. That sucks. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Scatino Clever. was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Damn. Said I will not be making any comments. Oh my god, that hurt. What the hell? The ship, salvage tips. operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012. Why did this make a new ship? Like, maybe I don't get this, but, like, if it costs that much money, why don't this make a new ship? They can't leave garbage in the ocean. Yeah, I mean, I guess that would probably piss everybody off. Like, you just go outside, and you're like, man, I have this nice beachfront home. Oh, there's a ship that fucking sank 40 years ago. <laughs> there's some seagulls on it. They first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. Wow. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. Oh my god. The sponsons god. were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. Wow, the that's impressive. The sponsors were then attached to the side out. of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially like above dirty, water, though. and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons, and compressed air was pumped in to lift yeah, the ship. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. Oh my god. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. Oh my god, this guy, at a certain point, at a certain point, it's just like, it's like somebody can just become such a piece of shit that you almost respect how shameless they really are you know what i mean it, it becomes so bad that it's not even bad anymore and it's just funny you gotta enjoy it while you can that's true i mean this guy uh he's making the rounds he's shame he is this is crazy the end anyway so these are the things that oh I remember my God. from the Costa Concordia. 
This is incredible. That sweet wow. maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. Jesus. Well, it's time to return you. From whence you came. What a disaster, man. What a fucking disaster. Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product, check them out. Yep. Number two, there's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was temporarily restricted. Now it's not. Enjoy. Ooh, Three, if you've content. never seen the second channel before, give it a go. It's a different type of content, but we put a lot of production into it. It's not just offcuts. Four, there are a couple secret channels as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. Five, no more 45 minute videos on the main channel. Back to 10 to 15 minutes and more of them. Six, oh, like there's a Q&A coming out next week on incognito mode. It's got a ton of detail that we had to cut for the sake of brevity and will no doubt feature a ton of corrections as well. Wait, there's 30? Oh my God, that's so insane. Jesus. That's it. Thank you. Spicy. Oh my God, man. Like, what a fucking adventure. Watch, I, I'm not, I don't watch the interview or the, the phone call with the two guys. What a fucking video. Like, it's one of those things where it happens and there i'll link you guys the video give it a like i mean it's got fucking half a million likes so uh you know we can give it a few more what a fucking ridiculous what a what a ridiculous i don't even know what to say it's like that's i mean at a certain point the concordia guys i mean they're bringing it on themselves right i mean you have the guy and he fucks up the ship once and then the next time he sails it into the docks. It's like at that point, it is no longer his fault. It is your fault for allowing him anywhere fucking near that ship again. But really, I mean, that, that's crazy. Uh, it may be a corruption problem. It may be a corruption problem. Uh, listen, whenever somebody who, who, who is in an incompetent position is uh, fucking involved with something it is not maybe a corruption issue it is probably a corruption issue it is a very very high probability of a corruption issue like 100 fucking percent how much insurance money he made them that's wait oh my god wait do you think he shipwrecked it on purpose that's no way there's no way and then they paid a million dollars to get out of it this is actually these videos are so good man like these videos are so fucking good i i never i never can get over how good these are these are really 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 well uh really really well done